everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures, and today is January 25th, so you know what that means. Christmas is in 11 months, and I know that sounds silly to say, but it is the truth. And I thought I'd just take this day to share some of the Christmas crafting that I've been doing. I craft for all the holidays, all times of year, just when the mood strikes me. So my first craft is inspired by a few people, some friend mail that I received, and a desire to display the tops and bottoms of ribbon rolls. So if you have a ribbon roll, the image on the bottom is gonna face the table and no one will see it. And then the top might be too high or you might put a figurine on it and you can't see it as well. So I wanted to display the image so I thought, well, the only way people are gonna see it is to take it off. So I had it off for a while, thinking about what to do, thinking about framing it, but I frame a lot of my ephemera, so I wanted to do something different. And Laura Roberts had sent me some to and from gift tags that she used a big circle punch to cut out. So I went to the store and I wanted to do that with some of my ephemera that I, I just have so much. So I was cutting circles and then I had this circle here and I realized that they were the same size, so coincidence. And I had a reflector out that someone sent me and I saw that you could put these circles on top and there was still a good amount of the reflector that you could see and you could embellish them in all different ways. So I thought, that's it, I'm gonna make little ornaments, little gift tags. So for this one, some of the reflectors flatten easier than others, so this one was more 3D. So I needed something to create a little bit of height in there and cover up the hole from the spool. So I had a bingo chip and that red color matches nicely. I did a little bit of trim here. And then my hanger is some garland with some wire. And then on the back, I like them to be finished, so I chose one of my circles that I punched out and I like to include price tags so I had this one that was hanging. So the fun thing is once you punch out your circles and you just kind of have your buffet of decorating items it's just fun to put these together. Each one is unique and different um, and it, it's just easy watch a YouTube video and, and make some of these. So for my to and from gift tags, all I did was just take two images and glue them together with a little piece of string sticking out. So you could tape the string onto the wrapping paper. And then I just made sure that there were spaces that you'd be able to um, write somebody's name. I think that this would be really nice if you have some Christmas seals. I have a bunch and I haven't really figured a way to um, craft or display them. So that could be nice going across. And I have ones that are a lot smaller. Um, the seal could also be nice to just fill up that little circle there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of these items right now to create a new one. On the back of my reflector, I glued a Rudolph sheet music circle. And between the reflector and that, I have this green ribbon. And it, I think it actually came from this spool right here. So now I'm gonna trim up Santa and he's gonna go on top. And any glue that I have there will just help him adhere. I'll add some more and then you can see it covers up the circle nicely, or that hole right there. I glued the Santa on top, a little candy cane, and then I pick something heavy to sit on top for about five minutes to keep everything smushed and tight. And that's it, it's finished, that simple. Recently, I have been crafting with bottle brush trees. I picked these trees up at Target after Christmas. They were 50% off. So the garland cost $6 and there were about 11 trees on there. So at about 50 cents a piece, I think that's a great price for a crafting material. So for this first one, I used a little glass pitcher that I picked up at an estate sale for a dollar. Because it's clear, I added some silver beads at the bottom. And then I have some white garland to camouflage the base of the bottle brush tree. And to decorate the tree itself, I used rhinestone buttons and some baker's twine. To repeat the red color, I used red velvet ribbon and a mother of pearl pin that I attached a rhinestone button to. 
I used a blue ceramic base for the second sculpture. I picked this up at a flea market and bundled it with a few items, so it probably worked out to be free. I used gray velvet ribbon, and I really like these containers and vessels that have a little indent at the neck because the ribbon fits nicely in there. I trimmed it with some blue-green beads, and I have a pin. The pin might be sterling. It does have a very old, fragile, blue plastic flower and in it is a religious medal. I picked that up at a church rummage sale. Some white garland in here and then the tree. I used silver wired garland for a little bit of sparkle, some more rhinestone buttons, and then when I cut this um, and opened up the wire, two beads became loose, so I just used those to add a little bit of color to the top, and I happened to have a button in my stash that was a very similar color. The last sculpture that I created with a bottle brush tree is this embellished Tonka truck. I picked that up at a flea market for under $2. And I liked the fact that it was not the red color like the other ones I had. I added a tree that I picked up at a thrift store for just a couple cents, tied some baker's twine around it, added some glass ornaments. And my friend recently sent me this yellow Santa and how perfect that I could use it on this yellow sculpture. The last thing that I've been working on is framing up some vintage Christmas ephemera. So in this frame, which I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar for at a flea market this summer, actually yard sale this summer, uh, it's a nice modern style, two pieces of glass and it's hinged. They sell things like this at Target and Anthropology. So I was happy to find that for under a dollar. And uh, I have these paper dowels that I purchased from eBay. I absolutely love the designs. They were printed in 1917, so a little after the Victorian period, but I think it has that nice romantic Victorian feeling. And the paper that I put behind it is letterhead from this lace company that came with um, the lace maker that I purchased in the $5 fill a bag um, back in the fall. And I liked that it was black and white and didn't have any color. I thought the um, the faded color of the paper looked nice with the white of the designs of the outfits. And there's some typewriter in the background and I love that that makes like a little um, illegible font since I've covered up a lot of the words. So I wanted something to fill up some of the empty space but not distract from the outfits. And I think that that was successful because I really focus in on these colorful pieces. And I added this little star seal up here just for a little bit of uh, glitter. I did play around with different Christmas seals and things and ultimately I just tried to keep it simple. I did add this faded bow. It was from some little wall hanging that I picked up at a flea market for a dollar. And sometimes I buy things that aren't in great shape and I can piece them apart and use them for different things. This was probably bright red at one time and now it's this awesome orange salmon color, which I think complements that bow quite nicely. I have just wired it to the little lock that opens and closes the frame. I like to do things like that, um, instead of permanently attach them whenever I can, in case I change my mind or I don't wanna damage the um, older items. But I liked it here because I thought it looked like a little book or a little journal, and then this is what you would use to fashion it shut. And I framed it to go with this picture of this little girl talking to Santa. My friend sent this to me in some friend mail, and I just think it's absolutely precious. I would bet it's from the 30s or the 40s just with her outfit and the paper it's printed on. It's not a glossy um, photograph. It's uh, a matte textured like watercolor paper. Um, but I just thought she looked like the perfect age to be wearing these outfits. And I had this frame in my stash, probably paid a dollar for it at a yard sale as well. I love this fake um, mother of pearl look and the tarnished gold or brass to match with that frame. So they will always be displayed together. The last piece that I framed was this photograph that I purchased on eBay. I was really drawn to the drama of the high contrast black and white. I thought it was really in focus and I loved that she had stars on her little robe. So when I was at Savers, I saw this frame. Originally, it looks like it's from the dollar store. 
I purchased it for 80 cents and I thought it had a lot of crafting possibility with a plain white wide frame, this gold clip, and the background was just a neutral tan color. So I covered it with red and white striped Christmas wrapping paper. All I had to do was cut a little slit and a little hole and just slide it up and it uh, laid perfectly. Because I used the red striped wrapping paper, I used some red foil Denison stars which matched the stars on her robe. And then I added this Christmas seal. I added it because the silver looked good with the black and white photo and the red was repeated again. But I also liked the sentiment. I don't know if it's Christmas morning or if she's snooping under the Christmas tree before Christmas. So I thought do not open until Christmas was fitting. I purchased this seal at an estate sale and it was in a little envelope with one other seal. So one was missing and it had this little note, three tiny Christmas stickers circa 1920s. So of course I had to keep the original note with it. So I just wanted one more piece to finish this off. So I added these chenille candy canes. I like the red and white stripes that were repeated and there were little foil stars. So I think it was just all meant to go together. Whenever I can attach something without glue, I like to do that. So the clip, when I saw that at the store, I thought, perfect. I could clip a special picture there and not have to glue it down. And with this little piece, there is um, a sticker on the back that says Japan. So I really didn't want to add glue to that because I love knowing where things are from. It had a little piece of metal. So I was able to feed that through the frame and bend it over and it is... Uh, tightly positioned with no glue. I can move it a little to the side, but it's not going anywhere. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on. Bye.